Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us in London, Sloane Square, the heart of London, because we're going to the Royal Court Theatre. Yeah, the very heart of new writing in London. They have so many successful transfers. We've seen so much good theatre here. And we I'm have. just hoping that this piece, Seven Methods of Killing Kylie Jenner, lives up to the fantastic reputation that the Royal Court has. So stick around to hear all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. And whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. Well, we're back at the Royal Court after so back long. In the I can't even remember the last thing we saw here. I can't Road, remember. Maybe? No, we've seen something since. Let us know oh down gosh, below if, you, if you're look. big like your big stands of ours, and you know you keep up with what we've seen. Let us know what we have. All seen I know here. is we've always had. There's always a good vibe here. Yeah, there is. And it seems as if a lot of stuff has moved out into the square of Sloane Square in terms of drinking and stuff. They've got a yeah. Really nice there's bar. a beautiful Royal Court outside bar, like Royal Court on the square here at the moment, which is gorgeous. I but hope it, it stays. Does, yeah, it'd be not well. I, you say I hope it stays on a day like today where it's dry. It's very muggy though. Is it's what unpredictable I would say. in but the yeah, UK. But yeah, you can't isn't it? always have an outdoor space oh, reliably. Either. Anyway, yes, um, I would say it definitely feels to me like COVID is over. Like it's just so. Uh, there's so many people on the streets. I remember when we came here in the break last year when we could go to theatre for a while, and it was deserted. It's still a ghost town. It was, but it no more. Heart is thumping London here in is London. Back, and if you are all up for the return of theatre, then you're lucky because it's I think it, I feel like it's a juggernaut now. Okay. It's just gonna come barge. You wanna know about the piece? I do. do I wanna know about the piece. Right, so we've got to go in soon. Seven Methods of Killing Kylie Jenner is a brand new play that had a bit of a short run last year before COVID shut it down. It's just the gendarmes. Um before, because I mentioned the word killing Kylie Jenner. They've booked us. They think we're going to do it. We're not going to do it. I had a short run pre-COVID and then it, it may have even had a broadcast. I might be making that up. I don't oh, know. Really? But, Let us know down below. Uh, but it's back to finish off the run it should have had back, way back when. Okay. And it explores cultural appropriation, queerness, friendship and the ownership of black bodies both online and, and in real life. It sounds interesting. Sounds current. Sounds up to date. It's How very fun. much about the WhatsApp, Instagram age, immediacy of news going out there, jumping on causes. Very appropriate for now, is what I would say. Um, written by Jasmine Lee Jones, she won multiple awards for the, her debut play, directed by Millie Batia which is this one right here, including the Evening Standard and Critic Circle Most Promising Playwright Award and was originally developed as a writer through the Royal Court Young, um, Young Theatre People's Training Programme. Wow. Amazing. Only two in the cast. Okay. It's a two-hander. We have got Bo, um, Tia Bannon playing Cara and yeah. Leanne. Did I, did I spray that at you then? No, I, I just got something got in my you. eye. I thought it was my <laughs> it explosive B on Bannon. No. Bannon. <laughs> Like that. Right. And Leanne Henlon playing Cleo. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to it. 90 minutes straight through. Two hand, uh, 90 yeah. minutes straight no through. Interval. No interval. Slightly, slightly down. thrust the stage out into the stalls, from what I could tell by the season plan, which is good because we're slipping it because your girl ain't made a money. Okay. So, so stick around, yeah. fellow leggers, to the end to hear our thoughts of this piece. Catch you then. Well, cool. Well, we've um, successfully murdered Kylie Jenner. Seven times. Seven times, in fact. What did you think of each one of your seven methods of killing? It is seven. rather loud here, isn't it? Loud. We're on the, it's such it's a busy corner. Every day I'm hustling. Uh, of, it is such a vibrant part of London. Like, yeah. it's a really nice place to be. I mean, be. it's Knightsbridge, so it's, it's basically chihuahuas in purses. It's chihuahuas in Louis Vuitton. So it's a really vibrant place, hence why we're shouting, because it's really busy. Yeah, sorry um, about however, that. However, what did I think of it? I thought it was R. really... R.I.P. headphone users. I thought it was really interesting. Um, a really interesting piece, really insightful, really of now. Um, it's interesting, because it's almost about the, the Twitter sphere and social sphere. And I felt as if actually quite a lot of the points were part of my echo chamber. Like this is a, well, we a have, narrative and a story yeah. that we kind of discussed this We have often. conversations a lot about cancel this culture, absolutely. about appropriation. We have questions about should... Is, Representation. Um, not, not just that, it's for me a, a very much a piece in, by and large about um, 
can people who have held such views in the past be rehabilitated? Do things that are violently expressed online actually equal an intent? Also, generational trauma around, you know, yes. oh, well, can we just let go of the past? Well, no, actually, how in fact it's still very important and affects people coming through to today. Yes. Like, it does. And not only that, the whole idea is in there of intersectionality, how um, sexuality affects things, about being a woman, how it's different to be a black woman and a white woman. Yes. And r all of those things are in there. And I, and I think for some people, where if this isn't their echo culture, this would be really insightful. Like, oh, I wow. They're really eye Opening. But are they coming? To, are those people coming to see a play at the Royal Court? Or are that's they the part question. of their own echo chamber, which you know, doesn't stay, let them in? They won't be and in. That's kind of they'll a sit whole, in their own, won't yeah, they? Yeah, there's a whole thing. There's so, so yeah. many issues and discussion points. So layered and really, like you say, of now, in the, such a way that it, it, it speaks very publicly and very openly about a lot of the questions that we ask and are comfortable to ask in a private environment. Yes. But to put it on stage and to be so bold and to say, I am a black woman, I experience this, this is the reason why. And to have a forum to do that, I can only really give massive respect to the playwright to be so bold. It feels like a very bold piece. Yeah, and yet it is just someone's lived experience. It is just them having a voice. I feel like and we're talking in strange. riddles a little bit because we've seen it. And yeah. it's hard well, to... Well, this is how we're we always doing. Yeah, we, but we, we don't... don't I'm not going to break it I down. I don't want to give anyone any spoilers or tell them what they should or shouldn't no. think in seeing this piece. But depending on what your point of view is on cultural appropriation, queerness, cultural sexuality, uh, on gender and gender bias and race bias depending on what your thoughts are going into here i would be very interested to see what they are coming out like you said it doesn't really change our opinion on a lot of things because we would consider ourselves quite aware of these issues culturally but fuck me would it be a shock to, to those that weren't and yes. that's bold that's challenging and that's what theater should be yeah and i guess that's the discussion is it bold or is it just uh, something it we life? don't get to see it's just life but we don't get to see this, which again is why it was really nice to see a diverse audience because we all always say that there's no representation in this audience yeah. because there's no representation on the on stage. On the freaking They're stage. They're not telling or a story. In the creatives, but today there was, and as a result, we saw the most diverse audience we've seen in a long time and thank so, fuck for that is it bold or is it a tragedy that that this these messages aren't getting out there that this that this these stories aren't being told do you know what i mean that's what that's also yeah. a discussion i'm thinking of because this shouldn't be a one of peace this should be this should be every theater. other this should be theater yeah. this is this, this shouldn't should be, be an anonymous within. anomaly that's what i'm trying to say i get what you so mean so it's nice got to see the, the platform yeah. and as usual it's a place like the royal court that is that championing that. and is advancing yep. those um issues. Thank, and thank goodness for for a space so highly renowned and has such a reputation as the royal court and i feel privileged to, taking those risks. to hear those voices they, they and shouldn't be risks. see those experiences what the hell is going on with our world um so that's that's so in terms of um, the piece in general, yes. in terms of the production yes. then, really engaging in terms of the lighting, lighting and the sound. sound. I found it quite an artistic staging. piece of set. Can I, can I talk about Go this? On, then. I almost found it a piece this of art. This, okay. They have this kind of fabric, mesh fabric, that kind of dropped like down Like some sort of installation at the tape. Stretch. Right, it could have been thinking? an installation at the tape. Because at different points through the piece, I thought I this that. could be a number of things. Is this the threads hanging down as in the threads of Twitter? Are these and the then, lynch ropes? Are these lynch ropes? I, is this an echo chamber? Is this a... And I just thought, do you know, actually this is quite a piece of art where it's almost down to the eye of the beholder. What it is, it's beautiful, it looks lovely. It goes and, to show, we, all, we always yeah. say that art is subjective and we apply that to things theatre but here yep. you've got a piece of physical art as the set which yep. is as subjective as the piece itself yes no box set here um, and very meta as a piece very speaking to the audience outside uh, breaking the yes. fourth wall was, inviting them in it is a meta piece almost performance art yeah at some stage, it kind is. Of taking More the art. time it's art on top of art on top of art the, the cast made connection with me as an audience member at various points through the piece yep. i felt very involved and then I, I guess this is a spoiler to a degree oh shut your ears we had eye contact 
the cast at yeah. the moment to take eye contact with every, with every single, single which is member. easy to do when you've got a socially distanced audience because there's only half the people there it runs at 90 minutes no interval if it was a full audience two hours two 15 hours. that's yeah, what i would absolutely. say two so that was really engaging really interesting um storytelling yeah really and as well as that as well as the piece um of let's talk about the set then let's give a shout out to um designer um raja shakiri um, mm -hmm. who has also done a load around the world actually uh, including in Misty in the West End which with the set again was actually that makes perfect with sense with our Rinse Kenny one of our makes perfect favorite, sense and favorite. Nine Night Brilliant. makes sense lovely um, and also must give a shout out to the co-lighting designers Jessica um, Hung Han Yun and Amy May and also the sound designer Eleanor Penner now Let's talk about the performers. Cast Let's of two. Talk about cast of two. You had Tia Bannon as Kara, a queer youth who is carrying her own baggage around with her and is asking questions. Just does my baggage lay less than, less than your baggage just because my experience doesn't echo yours? Um, for really, really energized performance, it's a really difficult piece because not only are they themselves as a single <coughs> cast member, but then they take on the voices. The sun has come out and I'm being blinded. Of Twitter. Of they the talk, Twitter. Audience. They take this on... never happens we in go. London. We're not prepared for sun. The, um, they take on the voices of different <coughs> Twitter um, threads and different things. So they're putting on different accents, but then they're also putting performance into them. So they're kind of moving around, choreographed. Yeah, as well. massive movement So a energy. big demand on them. I thought yeah. she was fantastic. She, I thought she was great. Delphine Gabaret as movement director, working hand in hand with Millie Batia as director. Yep. I would imagine it felt very much like a workshop piece that they'd let the actors maybe you know express that how would you say that how would you feel that yes that works yes. it feels like a piece created yeah. by An the environment that it, that it was created piece. in yeah which I yeah. love I love that bring a you know because actors have a you know they have a strength and they have something to offer creatively oh thank you thank you love what's that what is it a little bit of food a bit of a crud little i haven't bit eaten of... anything recently yeah. i've been there um but yes i think it is important to invite the actors in creatively as well and they i can clearly see they've done that here so that is great as well and that's what we're assuming it had that yeah. feel it felt very I'd be very surprised if it yeah. wasn't and leanne henlon as cleo i really liked her <laughs> I, 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 I thought she was the, got some real cough, but i've not got covid and she's got um, some a real grounded performance. I was like, I think she's going to go places, places, places. Is this a professional debut? Really? And my God, was it strong? What? Well, Excuse she's me. going places. <laughs> He's just coughing his guts up. I, th I think she's absolutely going to go places because she was fantastic, grounded yeah. in terms of all the different accents, in terms of that Believable. anger, but That's then in the terms point. of the poise as a two-hander debut on this stage. I've got to say, for I've the role of, of Kara, played by Tia Bannon, she is mainly one, and, and this is in the writing, she is mainly like the grounded voice of reason. There isn't a huge amount of places for her to go, but the character of Cleo, I, I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. goes on a massive emotional journey where she's forced to confront truths and insecurities and reality in a way that the other character doesn't necessarily. And as a result, it felt like a real pull on that actor's ability but she rose to the challenge which Effortless. was amazing Effortless shall we give dynamic. her a break a leg as nomination i do believe we are best going to best actor we're saying actress still aren't we we haven't so. neutralized that yet. not yet but we will yeah we probably should um we will um, but best actress in a play for leanne henlon in the role of cleo in seven methods of killing kylie jenner yes a uh, professional debut blow really us away love blow down places. right Let's wrap it up because we've gone on and considering it's only 90 minutes straight through. Can I say, I've said this before, but the Royal Court, whenever you pick up a programme, the programme is the text. Yeah. So you always come away with the text as well. Which is incredible. How, I, for I, the I same price, actually, for less than you would pay than a programme in the West End, which is mainly adverts, I mean, let's face it. Yeah, so hey. Which is bonkers. Well, I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give Seven Methods of Killing Kylie Jenner playing here at the Royal Court. We, we are going, are going to, to give. give. 
four. Four stars for this piece. Not the full five, because in terms of production, there were elements that you said you felt might have worked better with different performers or different oh. voices. There's that sometimes, would have been a bit long. Uh, yeah, we're talk about this. Sometimes we're in the echo chamber, I forgot about this, in when the they Twitter are being the twist sphere. sphere, I lost some of the text. You know. It looked fantastic, and what they're doing, I thought, yeah, that's good, but I'm not catching it. I don't know what has been said here. Oh, and also, do you know, it's really showing my age. It's written really well, loads of acronyms, almost as if it's a Twitter conversation or an online WhatsApp message Just conversation. Game, I didn't get it. ADF, HDC, EDT. Some of it I got. HRT. And some of these, so I was like, this is too quick. I, I, I need TTFN, to I need look. to write some of these down. So I think potentially accessibility wise, but I just thought, do you know what, this is look the language. Now, yeah. But I don't know what I'm looking you at. You can have a read of this. That's what these Why is. Why is it for? Yes, it is. It's, hey, I've got it here. Yeah. I, I don't know what they got, were now. Like, You've just been promoting how you got I've, the text. I've got the text. You can read that on the way home, love. Why is it for you? Four Why stars. was it for me, four stars? I think you're. I don't know whether in terms of production, and it probably wasn't the point. It, I, what I found really interesting about the play, the play text is it has gifts printed into it um, that they acted out at certain points. But unless you're familiar with this text in the first place, you're familiar with this gif or this image or this meme, it would have been a little bit lost on you without the visual. I feel so. It, maybe if the production for me would have been a little bit more dear Evan Hansen. You wanted TV screens. I want the. What's the. Is that what's what you're the, saying? What's oh, the projections. Yeah. You want you know, projections. Out of the in the bed of the burning new bed. That, that. Okay, there we go. So that's what you wanted to make it five stars. Okay, but hey, that's totally just what he thinks. What do you think? Let us know down below. Have you seen it this run, pre COVID? Is there a broadcast or something? Have you seen it online? Let us know. We'd love to know. Down below is where you go. Hey, and hit subscribe while you're there, because I'm like I'm riffing and I'm tweet. I'm I'm like rhyming for England. We're in London this weekend, so yeah. we're off later to see a show at the Bridge. So stick yeah. around. Make sure you subscribe. Check out and share our other your thoughts. videos. We're the Breaker Legacy. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.